Okay, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much for the organizing committee for organizing this conference and accepting our paper. Actually, I'm really happy to join with this conference. Okay, then now I move into the our presentation. So in that case, actually we proposed a novel approach to densify the loose sand by using polymer modified microbial induced carbonate precipitation method. Okay, let me introduce our team. Myself, I'm Hiranya from University of Japan and Professor Nakashima and Professor Kawasaki from the Hokkaido University, Japan. Okay, then I will move to the introduction. Actually, you all know today due to the urbanization and the rapid growth of population, suitable land available for the construction are decreasing. Because of that, actually people are more to use problematic weak ground for the construction. But when we use the problematic weak ground, we need to improve the properties of that ground before we do the construction. So we call that process as the ground improvement. So in the case of ground improvement method, there are several drawbacks are available with the available conventional method. In the case of mechanical improvement, actually the treatment depth is limited and also it's mostly suitable for the coarse grain type of soil. In the case of grouting method, it's suitable for the, it is uh, most of the soil type, especially for the fine grain soil. But in the case of grouting material used for the grouting technique are sometimes not environmentally friendly. As an example, in the case of cement, it contributes for the large amount of carbon dioxide emission. And also in the case of chemical grouting, most of the chemicals are very toxic for the human and also for the nature. So in that case, actually today engineers as well as the researchers, they are thinking about some kind of biological approach where we can use to treat the weak soil in an environmentally friendly way. So under that, actually the microbial induced carbonate precipitation, simply we are calling it as MICP, has gained much attention as a actually eco-friendly and sustainable approach to treat the weak soil. Okay, then let's see what is this MICP. MICP is actually biogeochemical process. In that case, actually we are producing a uh, biomaterial artificially by using enzymatic reaction. So for that one, actually we are using an enzyme called urease. We can find this urease enzyme in some kind of bacteria species. So then let's see how it's happening. Actually, in the case of urease, it, have, it has actually capability to hydrolyze the urea and it produces ammonia and the carbonate ion. Then this carbonate ion can be precipitated as calcium carbonate with the presence of the calcium ion. So this precipitated calcium carbonate, it is a biomaterial then. We can use that one to actually densify the uh, loose sand and also to improve the other properties of the soil. Okay, then up to now, actually, uh, there are a lot of number of research work have been carried out to check the effect of this MICP on the soil properties improvement. And they have proven that actually MICP has capability to improve the soil properties very effectively. So in that case, then now researchers are thinking about how can we improve the efficiency of this MICP process further. So for that one, actually introduce of the organic material can be a best approach because if we introduce the organic material, we can actually form organic inorganic hybrid biomaterial. So this organic inorganic hybrid biomaterial can be a best solution to treat the weak soil effectively. So to fulfill this target, actually first time, we introduced the chitosan type of biopolymer for the MICB process and we try to form some kind of hybrid biomaterial for the soil improvement purpose. Okay, then let's see what is this chitosan. Chitosan is actually a natural biopolymer and it is a polysaccharide. It is a product derived from the chitin deacetylation. So chitin is a natural biopolymer we can find in nature, mainly in the exoskeleton of arthropods and in marine diatoms and in some algae. So then our purpose is introduce the chitosan in the NYC process and produce some good hybrid material and check the effect of this hybrid material for the potassium carbonate formation and finally for the sand solidification. Okay, then now I move into the my methodology part. So first we check with the calcium carbonate precipitation with and without the chitosan. For that one, we conduct a laboratory scale experiment in the presence of urea, calcium chloride, and we use parahydobacter as the uretic bacteria. 
and we conducted experiment with and without Kaitisa. So our experimental time is 24 hours. Then after 24 hours, we collected the precipitate and we analyzed the precipitate using a scanning electron microscope. Okay, then these are the results for the calcium carbonate precipitation experiment. So in here you can see the amount of precipitate has increased with the increase of the bacteria cell concentration. Okay, then the reason is very clear by looking at this figure. You can see when we increase the cell concentration, the urease activity of the solution also getting increased. Then the higher urease activity is uh, actually caused for the uh, obtaining of the higher amount of precipitate under higher cell concentration. And also next interesting point we can notice here, we can see with the chitosan, we could obtain higher amount of precipitate than the case of without chitosan. So in that case, I want to mention one thing, actually with the chitosan, the precipitate contain both of the calcium carbonate and the chitosan hydrogen. So then this hydrogen, how it's home actually, because for experiment, we use this chitosan solution, but during the urea hydrolysis, it produced ammonia. This, because of the ammonia, it produced alkaline medium. So that alkaline medium is favorable for the chitosan to form its hydrogen. Then this hydrogen also precipitated with the calcium carbonate crystal. And also on the hand, chitosan has a capability to upgrade the calcium carbonate formation. Okay, then let's see what's happening for the morphology of the crystal. This is the case of without chitosan, then you can clearly see it form rhombohedral crystal. But you can see under a higher cell concentration, it produces smaller size crystal, but larger amount. So the reason behind this is actually in this phenomena in the immersive process, the bacteria cell themselves, they act in as actually the nucleation site. So under higher cell concentration, it has more bacteria, then it has more nucleation site, then it forms more uh, calcium carbonate without growth of the individual crystal. That is uh, the reason we are obtaining smaller size, large amount of crystal under higher cell concentration. Then if we think about the morphology of the crystal without cardisan, in this figure, you can clearly see the precipitated hydrogen also, right? That the hydrogen also incorporated with the calcium carbonate some places. So in this case, another thing we can notice is we could obtain both rhombohedral and spherical shaped crystal. So according to the XRD pattern, we confirm actually the precipitate contain then both calcite and batterite type of calcium carbonate. Okay, then I move into the my next part of the research, sand certification experiment. So in that case, actually we did laboratory scale experiment. So we use a commercially available recover sand for the experiment. Then we use the syringe and we fill the syringe as three layers and each layer we gave hammer blows. Then our experimental time is 14 days. Then the, we inject the bacteria during the first day and after that we inject the cementation solution. It contains urea, calcium chloride and other nutrients. Then we inject the cementation solution actually daily. Then during the seven day again we inject bacteria and during the 11th day we inject the chitosan and during the 14th day we finish our experiment and we remove the sample from the syringe and we uh, actually determine the unconfirmative compression strength value of this uh, cemented sample using needle penetrometer device. Okay, then these are the results we obtain in for the sand solidification. You can see estimated UCS value without and with chitosan. So you can see in both of the cases, the strength has decreased from top to bottom. The reason is very clear because we injected our solution, bacteria, everything from the top. So the accumulation of the solution and the bacteria at the top is high. Then the precipitation of the carbon, calcium carbonate is high at the top. That is the reason we could obtain higher amount of strength at the top of the sample compared with the middle and the bottom. Okay, then most interesting finding in this research is actually with chitosan, we could obtain higher strength than the case of without chitosan. So the reason behind this is actually the strength gain is mainly depend on how effectively it will help to fill the pore spaces between the solid particle. Okay, in the case of the chitosan, it formed the hydrogel. So because of the hydrogel as shown in this SEM images, it helped to actually make a better bridge between the soil particles because of that soil particles are bonded together. And also it upgrade the calcium carbonate formation because of that it can effectively fill the pore spaces by using calcium carbonate than the case of without chitosan. That is the reason of obtaining higher strength and well-cemented sample under the presence of the chitosan. 
Okay, then finally, I will conclude our result. Actually, in that case, we did the experiment with chitosan, and we found that chitosan has a capability to upgrade the calcium carbonate formation. And also by adding chitosan, actually, we could obtain strongly cemented sand column than that of without chitosan. Okay, then that is the end of my presentation. Okay, thank you very much for your kind attention.